So exhibit A, a properly sharpened plain iron. You can even see the reflection on the on the shaving itself. Exhibit B, this disaster of a plain iron. We're going to fix that. Well, hello there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video by uh, Jens Davidson here. We are once again down in the basement doing some woodworking. And this is going to be a video that I uh, promised you in my last video. And that is a full coverage on taking an absolute disaster of a plain iron that uh, looks to have been ground by hand with a bench grinder. Uh, and we are going to turn this into a, uh, a piece of magnificent hair popping perfection. But anyway, let's get started here. So I'm going to give you guys a little breakdown table of contents on how we're going to proceed with establishing a bevel on this thing and, uh, and getting it sharp. So step one, establish a primary bevel using our 1x30 belt grinder. We're going to do 30 degrees for this particular case. Step two will be using the WorkSharp WS3000 to refine that primary bevel from whatever the 1x30 belt grinder left us with down to a 1000 grit and that will be a pretty sharp edge. And then step three will be using the Veritas Mark II honing guide to hone that edge to uh, over 10,000 grit um, beauty to get a, a secondary bevel on there. Just the last little tiny bit, like a 64th of an inch of a, a secondary bevel. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and get set up here. And I'll show you how I uh, how I set up my 1x30 belt grinder to a, to do a pretty decent 30 degree bevel. And that'll give us a really good starting point for the Workshop WS3000. Okay, so here we are with a simple angle gauge. This is an old antique. This is my father's or grandfather's. I don't even know. We are going to use this along with the cheap, simple aluminum framer square, speed square. And we're going to figure out our 30 degree bevel. So in case you don't know how to use one of these framer squares, they're actually super cool uh, to give you a, a bevel here. Bring you in a little bit. That's probably more helpful. All right, so marks here as a pivot point, and that's this corner. And you pay attention to the number scale here as we pivot this, using this as an example. That's a 20 degree bevel, referencing here. So that's 20 degrees off of 90 degrees. So that's either 20 degrees or 70 degrees, whether you're going off of normal or off of the 90 degrees. We want 30. So that's our 30 degrees. So we're going to hold that in place. Grab our angle gauge here, referencing this up against the same up against the same bench that we're setting up our uh, our square here. And we'll go ahead and lock this in, holding everything nice and tight, carefully turning that in. Make sure it's snug and make sure we don't botch it. We'll double check our work by spotting down there to see 30 degrees. Carefully bring this up. And that looks perfect. Alrighty. So now, we are going to cruise over to the 1x30 belt grinder and get that thing set up. So I set this up on these stacks of blocks. Uh, this is the plain iron is set just a hair back from this surface. This is what's going to be riding alongside the tool rest here. Then I've got this little three quarter bit of plywood as a spacer um, because I don't want the block right up against the belt. I want the blade up against the belt. And then, uh, you know, if the blade 
needs to protrude just a tiny bit back from the block. You don't want it sticking out past because otherwise you won't have the block sitting flat on this. The block will be tilted back. And then because the WorkSharp WS3000 references off of the right side of the plane on the little underside tool rest that it has, I referenced the right side of the plane iron. Set all these flat on the tool rest and that's how I clamped everything up. So now let's go ahead and use the angle gauge that we set at 30 degrees to set our tool rest so that we're at 30 degrees to our belt here. So this is my first time using this belt. This is a Norton Blaze 60 grit and I am honestly blown away at how aggressive and how quick the material removal is on that belt. Um, all those nicks are gone. It's a nice clean bevel. That belt is unbelievable. Uh, initially we were not square. We are now. It's now very nicely square. And what's immediately obvious, once I sort of roughly establish the bevel, I don't know if you guys can make this out on camera or not, but right above my pinky, I'm trying to get it in the reflection, it's hard for me to see on the viewfinder, there is a very clear demarcation line. And what that tells me is that we are still within the high carbon blade steel so the top of this is softer steel the bottom is high carbon steel so we still have some life left on this and I saw this exact same feature when I sharpened the original plain iron to the uh, to the number five that we restored I saw the exact same feature so that's awesome so what I'm gonna do now is bring that belt Take that out and replace it with a much finer belt, and then uh, we'll get this to uh, a grit that's more welcoming to the work sharp. I don't want to start doing my work sharp sharpening with a, uh, a 60 grit scratch pattern, is basically what I'm trying to say. So I think that's all we need to do with our 1x30 belt grinder. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I spent 10 minutes on this thing. Um, if you've got one of these, do yourself a, a huge service and get really high quality belts. Alright, so here's the WorkSharp WS3000. What we've got here is a, a float glass disc with a different abrasive on either side of it. The bottom of it here is 120 grit. The top of it is... Uh, 220 grit and we are going to start with the 120 on the bottom and we are going to use that to bring in the bevel uh, to refine the bevel edge and then once we've got that taken care of then we will flip this upside down so that the 120 is up on top 
and then we will uh, flatten the back of the plane iron. One of the handiest tools in sharpening, whether it's knives, chisels, plane irons, etc., is a blue sharpie. I just find blue to be easier to see than black. Or maybe it's because I just really like blue. So we cover in, color in the whole bevel there. Hopefully you guys can see that well enough. And we will now set the bevel of this thing to 30 degrees because it's currently at 25. So let's go ahead and get started here. So you should be able to see it now. Yeah, definitely, I can see it in the viewfinder. So I mentioned previously that there was a, uh, a clear distinction line that uh, sort of differentiates the high carbon blade steel, tool steel, from the mild steel. And we're using the exact same abrasive grit on this entire bevel, but you can see the scratch lines are much coarser above that line, and it's much finer, um, you know, sort of scratch pattern below it, and that's because there's a much, much finer grain pattern in that tool steel on the bottom than the, the mild steel on top. I think that grit on the bottom is cutting anymore when it gets used up. Now we will make quick, quick work of this plane iron now that we've got a sharp abrasive on here because that makes a massive, massive difference. And here we go. Alright, I'm calling it done with uh, the 120 grit. Time to flip it over and we'll use the 120 grit to flatten the back of the plane iron. That's what we're starting with. You want to touch down the back first and then roll it up to the front. You don't want to start with the front first because then you'll create a massive back bevel on there and you don't want that. Massive difference already. That's about a third the size that it was just a second ago. So I'm going to go ahead and save you guys some monotonous video watching here, uh, therapeutic as it may be on my end. Uh, I spent uh, quite a bit of time getting the back of this plain iron flat. Uh, it's a very important step in the process. Uh, but uh, It was clearly not done in the past on this particular tool because it's got quite a significant hollow right about in the middle of it. Um, so between flattening the back and then refining the bevel using uh, increasingly fine grits, that's about all we're going to be doing with the WorkSharp WS3000. We're going to go up to 1000 grit on the bevel and on the, on the back of the plain iron. And then from there, we'll go ahead and take it over to the uh, granite surface plate. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to that step. All right, so this is the last grid. I got uh, 1,000 grit on the bottom, and that's the 400 on top. I got a freshly sharpie, as you can see. Pretty good shape. So we're done with the work sharp. 
the back is as flat as I'm going to get it. That's a pretty deep pitting right there. I can feel it with my fingernail. Uh, so I'm not sure how well that's going to work out in probably five years when I bring it down to that point, but uh, for now, I think we're in good shape. So it's time to move on to the WorkSharp, I'm sorry, the uh, Veritas Mark II Honing Guide. We're going to return to our granite surface plate, uh, but this time we are not working on the sole of the plane. We're working on getting this thing dialed in. We are using honing films, which uh, they start at 12 micron, then I've got 5 micron, 3, 1 micron, and 0.3 micron. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So now we are all good to go. This thing is set up. We've got our 12 micron honing film here. We've got some sharpening oil, some honing oil on there. We've got a towel. And we're going to go at it here. I'm going to begin by just stropping back. So to begin with, uh, I originally had a whole bunch of footage outlining the uh, setup and some of the basics of the Veritas Mark II honing guide. However, in the interest of brevity, I edited a lot of that out. So I'm going to do a separate video going into all the goody details on the Veritas Mark II honing guide. done with 12 micron. We're going to leave this part alone and we're just going to wipe off the honing film and swap it out with our next one. As you can see we're only spending a couple minutes at each grit. This goes really quickly. Because you're only using these for the little teeny tiny bit at the tip of the blade, these honing films last quite a while. I've had these over a year. And I have a brand new set of them, but it's going to be a while before I actually need them because uh, you don't use these very quickly. Which is a nice feature. They're about $5.50 a piece, which isn't even terribly expensive. You're talking 20 bucks and you're all set. Alright, so this is next. This is 5 micron. Leave it kind of bent like that so that you don't get air in the middle. Let it float out. And then I have something that's really helpful, and I, you guys have seen this before. I used this for laying out the ink when I was uh, doing the scraping of the bottom. using a pretty good bit of pressure here just to make sure that we don't get air bubbles trapped in the film. That looks perfect. Yep, we're good with that. Thank you. 
Alright, I'm calling that good. So here's our leather honing belt. Just gonna fire this bad boy in here. It's pretty tight, but it's alright. Make sure we're tracking good. So, yeah, you saw me uh, cleaning this thing up on the leather strop with the white uh, polishing compound, and that's that was where we left off, and that's what you ended up with. You can see the reflection there. Very, very, very happy with how that turned out. That's better. You get the picture. Yeah, you can see it right there. That is a gorgeous finish ready remnant of this beautiful plane iron. This thing's awfully short, but there's still life in it because they're still still tool steel left in that blade. I think you get the idea. We were successful in turning this haggard train wreck of a plane iron into a masterpiece, frankly. And I'm very proud of how it turned out, and it did not take very long, thanks to using the 1x30 belt grinder with that amazing Norton Blaze 60 grit belt. One thing I would like to add is that the WorkSharp WS3000 is not entirely necessary. Uh, you could do all of this just by simply establishing the primary bevel with the 1x30 belt grinder and the angle gauge. And then you can use the Veritas Mark II honing guide to maintain that bevel angle and just use progressively finer grits of sandpaper on a piece of plate glass that you can get from a, a local glass supplier. Uh, so. You could take that approach. I really like the WorkSharp. Um, I'm really glad I bought it, but uh, given that it is a $200 tool, it might not be a viable option for everybody. But just thought I'd throw that out there. I know it's been a long video. Uh, I got a whole lot of editing to do. But uh, be safe and enjoy woodworking and yeah, turn off the uh, turn off the internet and get in your shop and work on something. Um, please like this video and subscribe and uh, I hope you guys uh, you know, leave a comment and a like so be safe and be healthy and uh, we'll we'll catch you on the next video I would love to see what this plane iron does to this piece of wood that we just that we just planed flat using this number four plane with this plane iron. We're simply swapping it out. Look at those shavings. Looks like Goldilocks' hair. And this is what you're supposed to be seeing. That's actually somewhat cool. I mean, that would be phenomenal for making fire starters with paraffin wax and uh, 
and uh, old egg cartons. I should try that. That's probably a good idea. 